Welcome to Modern Farm Business Podcast. This podcast is designed to help the farm leader bring their business to the next level. We'll cover everything from leadership and finance to strategy and planning. I'm your host, Dean Hefta. Being the first episode of 2018, I thought it'd be appropriate to spend some time on goal setting. Now, I'm not talking about the usual New Year's resolutions, where 80% of them are out the window by the end of February. Today, we're talking about getting into some of the strategies that can help us create focus for building the business, the farm, or the life that we really envision. Before we get into goal setting, though, let's first walk through a surefire formula for how to make sure that you don't achieve this year's goals. We'll call it the five tools to sabotage your goals. First, if you want to make it harder to achieve your goals, spend lots of time visualizing how great it's going to be once you hit your target. Now, this is a little counterintuitive, right? We've gotten a lot of advice that we should picture what it's going to be like when we achieve the goal. But the problem is our brain. It doesn't really know the difference between reality and when it's imagining something. Once we spend a lot of time thinking about all of the stuff after we achieve the goal, the brain begins thinking it's already won. It starts relaxing. It tunes out to the opportunities that are needed to get the goal because it already thinks everything's good. Instead, we need to picture the why of the goal. That becomes our motivation. And then spend more time getting into the how. We'll talk about that more later. Second strategy. Let other people set your goals or choose goals that you think other people would approve of. This is a great way to get off track way before Groundhog Day hits. There's something called the endowment effect, which simply means we value more highly the things that we own and the things that we've chosen for ourselves. When someone else puts goals on me, it simply doesn't have the same psychological energy that the thing that I've chosen for myself has which means I'm not going to have the same energy, creativeness, commitment, or even focus for the priorities that I haven't chosen. So when you're selecting priorities, be sure they are meaningful to you. And if priorities get put upon you, take some time to really dig into your personal why, why it can be important to you so you can emotionally connect to them. Another good tactic for falling way short of your ambitions is to select outcome-only goals. When we focus on only the outcome, like number of sales, number of acres, size of the yield, we completely miss a truth about goal setting. And that is, it isn't about what the goal is, it's about what the goal does. So when we focus only on the outcome, we miss the opportunity to have the goal change how and where we invest our time and our energy on a daily basis. So let's say I want to have a goal of being able to bench press 230 pounds this year. If that's where I stop with my goal, I just keep visualizing it and I I stop at that outcome, I'm really missing the opportunity to get into the how I'm going to get there. To do that, it's going to really require specific routines and exercises each week. And if I put my focus on the process, what and how I'm going to do on a a daily and weekly basis, I may find that I end up well exceeding the goal that I set to start with. A fourth strategy for us is if you really want to undermine your ability to achieve your goals, keep them only in your head. Don't write them down. Don't put them anywhere you can see them on a regular basis. And whatever you do, Don't tell somebody about your goals. The alternative to that is actually to commit your goal to paper. What is it that you want to accomplish? Put it on the dash of your truck. Put it on the the mirror in your bathroom. Share it with somebody who's going to check in with you and say, hey, how is it coming on that goal that you set? And here's a final good one to help you make sure you don't hit your goal. Never consider any of the hurdles that might come up in pursuit of your goal. You want to stay positive, right? Why bother with all that negativity? Here's why. If you don't take the time to consider the challenges that might come up, you're going to be slower to respond when they actually do, and they will come up. Because if there isn't anything keeping you from accomplishing the goal, you'd have done it already. So there has to be hurdles out here. When you lay out the challenges ahead of time, your mind can begin 
getting creative so you can meet those challenges with more energy and more solutions when they do come up. So what can work if we really want to create intentional achievement? You can put goals in more than just your business life. You can do it in all kinds of areas of your life. In episode 22 on Farm Reviews, one of the structures I laid out was under the Leader Life Review. In that, there were six different areas of priorities. And you can have more or less depending on what's right for you. In that structure, we had the areas of relationships, health, business, spiritual, family, and personal. When it comes to goal planning, I don't want to reinvent the wheel here, so I'm going to use a structure that Zig Ziglar used. If you're not familiar with Zig, he's one of the most prolific sales and success writers of all time. You should check him out. His approach has seven steps. Step number one, identify the goal, which means being able to describe it clearly. What is it that we're going to achieve? What is this goal that I'm setting out to accomplish? And write it down. There's something special that when we get things on paper, it commits it more deeply to us. And it gives us an opportunity to see it and and talk about it and share it with others. Second step, listing the benefits. In this goal, what is in it for me? Why am I doing this? That that why that that makes this this goal important to me. And this is an important step because this is the source of our motivation for putting the energy and the effort towards achieving this goal. Whatever the goal is, there has to be a why if we're going to change our behavior, change our habits, make it a priority. There has to be something that's important. So taking the time to identify what's the why. And this is that place that if it is a goal that's been put on us by somebody else, that we need to spend time here figuring out why is this goal, even if it's not mine, important to me? Third one, listing the obstacles that you're potentially going to have to overcome. If it's worth doing, you'll find some challenges in the process of achieving it. So get creative now and identify what might come up. Um, It might be my own habits that become a big hurdle for me. It might be some constraint that I'm going to encounter. Getting those down on paper, identifying them, allow you to begin thinking more creatively as you begin pursuing the goal. Okay, when I run into this, what am I going to do? How am I going to overcome this? Fourth step, identifying the knowledge and the skills that are going to be needed. Pursuing goals is a growth process. And in pursuing the goal, we grow as people and we learn new things. And so identifying what are the things that I don't know that I'll need to know as I pursue this? And what are the skills that I don't have that I'm going to have to get? And it's about closing the gap between the things that we know and the things that we can do, that knowing and doing gap. Step five, identifying the people and the groups that could help with advice, experience, expertise, and even encouragement as we go pursuing the goal. This is the team, the people that have been down this path before or that uh, have always encouraged us or can keep us on track because of the accountability they can provide. Any number of people that we identify that can help us. Maybe they have certain skills or knowledge that they're more than willing to help with. And what you find is people love sharing what they've learned, and they will help you pursue your goal. Number six. Develop a plan of action. You have to get into the details of how you're going to go about tackling the goal. And this is an area that is easy for people to miss, for people to go off track on, because they don't dig into the detailed steps that are going to be needed to pursue this goal. It is, what am I going to do on a weekly basis? What am I going to have done by when? And it's laying out that detail that if I focus on those key pieces of how we're going to pursue this, we're going to get to the goal. And the final step is setting a deadline. The deadline forces us to work backwards. And by putting that deadline out there, it creates accountability that we know this is what we're going to get to by when. And it moves us off of that someday thinking. Someday I'm going to write that novel. Someday I'm going to 
own that car. Someday I'm going to go to Australia. That someday keeps kicking the can down the road, putting the deadline, and working backwards. So quick review. Write down your goals, name the why, list the hurdles that could come up, identify the knowledge and skills you need, pick the people or groups that can help, develop a plan of action for how you will pursue the goal, and set a deadline. When we're setting goals, it isn't about perfection. I had a guy in a seminar one time tell me that he doesn't want to set goals because if he doesn't achieve the goal, he'll feel like he failed. What I shared with him is that it really isn't about the goal. And it isn't about failing if you didn't hit the goal. Remember, it's about what the goal does, not what the goal is. It's about focusing our attention. It's about pushing our boundaries and challenging our skills so we can continually get better. My challenge for you this year is to pick a couple of things that you want to accomplish. Use an approach like this or similar to this to help you focus on the goal. Have some fun with it and stay adaptable as you get new information. Change happens and pursuing goals is just as much about growing ourselves as it is about the goal. Thanks for joining me in this episode. As always, you can find more detail and additional links to uh, any of the programs in the show notes at modernfarmbusiness.com. If you have thoughts or questions, just send them along to dean at modernfarmbusiness.com. I look forward to joining you again next week. Have a great one.